All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to talk about compound interest because it's a fun way of learning math and you get rich quick. All right, so suppose you have the following scenario. You start with $200. $200. And suppose I'm Bank of Pi America and I tell you that if you put the money in our savings account, you get 10% interest per year. So APY, 10%, which is the same thing as 0.1. And the question is, how much money will you have after four years? How much money? after four years? And the answer is, it depends. It depends on how many times we actually give you interest. So there are a bunch of different scenarios which are very important to understand. Suppose I'm doing something simple, which means just taking interest once per year. So scenario one, that's what's called compounded annually. Then let's see how much money you have after four years. So initially, in year zero, you have $200. And the question is, how much money will you have in one year? Well, we, all we're doing, we're simply giving you 10% interest on those $200. So you have $200 and we're adding 10% interest. Then the amount of money you have is $200 times, if you want, 1.1, which is basically $220, which makes sense. If you add 10% to 200, you get 220. But just one little thing, this we can also write as 200 times 1.0.1. And that's in useful in case the interest rate is different. All right. Now, the question is, how much will you have after two years? Well, there are actually two ways of doing this which are very useful. One way is just taking the 220 and adding 10% interest. So you could just do 220 and do the same thing again. Then you get 220 plus 22, which is 242. So after two years, you get 242. But this is not very practical. And it turns out there's an easier way of doing this. Well, this 220, what is this? It's the effect, you know, or the result of uh, adding 10% to 200. So it's the same thing as doing 200 times, again, this thing, 1 plus 0 0.1, and doing it again, 1 plus 0 0.1. So it's the same thing as doing 200 times 1 plus, z plus 0 0.1 squared. And that's great because it allows you to go directly from 200 to 242, which tells you the following. It actually allows us to answer a question much easier. How much money do you have after um, four years? Well, you could just do 200 times 1.01 to the fourth power. So just doing this interest operation four times. And I believe in the end, what that gives you is 292.82. Uh, Which is quite nice. It means if you do this for four years, Bank of Pi America gives you a profit of $93 almost. So that's good. Now. That was the simple scheme where we just give you interest uh, once per year. 
what about the following thing and which is what banks usually do what if instead of giving you 10 percent interest once per year i give you five percent interest twice per year is that better or not we'll see so scenario two compounded so you buy annually which i mean twice per year so as i said before you are 200 and we added 10 percent after the first year here we just split it up into two we have 200 i give you five percent and then I give you 5% again. Okay. Is that better or not? Let's see. So, as I said initially, you start with $200. How much do you have after six months? So let's say year 0 0.5. Well, just 200 and you're adding the 5%. 0 0.05 and I believe that gives you something like 210. How much will you have after the first year? Remember, you did this twice, so there's two ways of doing it. You could either do 210 times 1.0.05 to get, let's see, uh, 220.5. Or you could simply do uh, 200. So again, here you get 220.5. Or you could simply do the same trick as before. To go from zero to two steps forward, you just do this twice. So you could do 200 times 1.0.05 squared, which should give you the same answer. And by the way, this already shows you that uh, this is our much better. Because with the previous scenario, we just got $220, but now we have 50 cents more. So the wrapper 50 cents would be proud of me right now. And now the question is, how much uh, is there after four years? Okay. So this is year four. Of course, you could do it once by one by one, but then let's try to be smart about this. If I compounded twice a year, how many total times am I taking interest? Well, per year, you're taking interest twice. So if you do it over four years, you're actually taking interest eight times. So four times two. So already, we can figure out the answer. How do you do this? Well, you're taking 200, okay, adding 1 plus, again, 10% divided by 2, so 5%, and doing it 8 times. And in the end, you get the following, 295.5. Uh, more than before, so that's very good. And of course, this is just one scheme, right? Before we compounded it once per year, uh, here we compounded it twice per year, but the question is, what if we compound it 12 times a year? So once a month, or even in general, n times per year. Well, let's first of all do the uh, 12 times per year thing just to make it more concrete. So scenario uh, three, so uh, 12 times per year. And let's try to figure out the um, general formula. So again, you're starting with 200. And again, the question is how much do you have after four years? Now, before we had 10%, Okay, once per year, and then we split it up into two to five percent, you know, twice per year. What about 12 times per year? It just means you're dividing 10 percent 
into 12 little pieces. So each time I will give you 10%, so 0 0.1, but over 12. So each time I will give you a 12th of 10%, because before I gave you half of 10%. And then the question is then, how many times are you doing this? Well, first of all, there are four years, so four times something. And how many times do you do it by year? 12 times. So in the end, the answer is, if you want, 200 times. 1 plus, again, 0 0.1 over 12. It's something like 1 over 120. 2 to 48. And that gives you 297.87. Let's say 298. So you see, you're actually getting more and more money that way. That's why I think banks are doing it, you know, uh, usually once per month. Okay. All right. Now the question is, okay, here we did it once per year, twice per year, 12 times per year. What if you just do it n times per year? Okay, well, it's kind of the same thing as before. So in general, for n times per year, okay, then what do you do? You start with 200 and then one plus your interest rate, 0 0.1, divided by how many times you have, so divided by n, and then because we want four years, we have four, and same thing, how many packets of, uh, um, you know, how many times do you do it per year? n times. So in general, if you do it n times per year, you get the following formula after four years. And last but not least, um, how, what about general, like for general amount of money, a general interest rate, and a general period of time, you end up with the following formula. So very important. So. Um, how can I say it? So if you have initially P amount of dollars, okay, if the interest rate is R percent or R, you know, think like 0 0.1 or something, and you do it N times, so compound it, N times annually, So again, before P was 200, R was 0 0.1, and N we did either 1, 2, or 12. Okay? And the question is, how much money after uh, T years? Well, the formula is simply as follows. You start with P. P times 1 plus whatever your interest rate is, R, divided by how many times you compound it, N, and then the number of years you want, so T, and uh, N, because in each year you compound it N times. So you can just write it as NT or something. So that's fine. So this automatically gives you the amount of money you have after t years starting with capital p and with the interest rate r and if you do it n times all right so as i said if you want to have your answer uh, you know um starting let's say with thousand dollars interest rate i don't know uh, 30 percent compound it 12 times a year and you want to figure it out how after five years you just do this thousand dollars three percent interest rate compound it uh, 12 times a year and after five years that gives you the end last but not least suppose you have the following crazy scenario 
instead of compounding the interest once per year or twice per year or 12 times per year you compound it all the time so suppose you have this crazy bank okay then you have the following scenario so suppose you have the following crazy bank that just compounds it every single second so every opportunity this bank has it compounds it and that's what's called continuous compounding. Compounding. So think of almost like compounding it infinitely many times. Then it turns out the formula before simplifies tremendously. Namely, if you start with P dollars and you have an interest rate R and you want to figure out how much money there is after t years, then the formula is simply p e to the rt, where e is this very important mathematical number called Euler's number, and it's roughly, I believe, 2.718 or something. So in this scenario, how, what is the answer? Well, if you start with $200, okay, and at an interest rate of 0.1, and you want to figure out the money after four years, the answer is simply 200 e to the 0 0.1 times 4, which is roughly $298. $8.4. Which is kind of the biggest possible thing you can get. But obviously, continuous compounding would drive uh, your bank here uh, a little bit crazy. You have to compound it every single second. <laughs> and um, if you want to stick around, I'd be happy to explain where this formula comes from. But just a little funny story. I once took a shower and uh, <laughs> there was a shampoo next to me called PERT. And that's all I could think of, P-E to the R-T. So weird. Uh, maybe the shampoo th person was like, I want to create a shampoo based on continuous compounding and that was the perfect thing. All right, now as I said, if you want to stick around, I'd be happy to explain why we get this formula E. So first of all, little fact from calculus. If you take 1 plus 1 over n and raise it to the nth power, then it turns out if n goes to infinity, so if n gets very large, this goes to this number e. So this is a fact that you'll prove if you hopefully take calculus. And the question is, what does it have to do with our formula? Our original formula, if you remember, was p times 1 plus r over n times, uh, I believe, nt. Now, the only issue is, well, if n goes to infinity, well, this goes to infinity, but this also goes to infinity, but at a different rate. Ideally, we would like the same variable to appear. So, but we can easily do that because r over n, that's 1 over n over r. And then n, you can write this as n over r times r. So this cancels out, and you get t. And in particular, if you let m be n over r, then this becomes p times 1 plus 1 over m to the m r t. Okay. Where again, I want to emphasize m is just n over r. But here's the thing. r is fixed. So if n is very large, m is also very large. So in particular, for this thing, we can just use the fact above. I mean, I'm just using m instead of n, doesn't matter. So the number in the box actually goes to e. And therefore, in the end, what we have, this becomes p e, so not pi m, but p e to the rt. And that's, this is how we roll. So that's why you get this formula. All right. I hope you like this and you will get rich very soon. Uh, if you do, please like and subscribe to my channel. All right, thank you very much.